now according to a recent report, the National Assembly approved 819.5 billion naira for the 2023 supplementary budget with significant allocations for different sectors. Now the budget set aside 500 billion naira as the provision for fuel subsidy removal to Nigerians. And the Ministry of um, Works and Housing is supposed to be allocated 185.2 billion naira and the Ministry of Agriculture will receive 19.2 billion naira. And the National Judiciary Council is allocated about 35 billion naira. All the Federal Capital Territory Project will receive 10 billion naira. And the new National Assembly members, about, um, I think they are about 330, right? 303. 303 of them will share 70 billion naira. <laughs> A lack of consideration for the civil servants raises concerns about fairness. Now, conversely, farmers who suffered the devastating 2022 floods across the country will be getting 19 billion naira. So what are your thoughts on this 70 billion naira budgetary allocation for lawmakers? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp is very one eight zero six four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wisho Africa One with the hashtag Wisho Diola. I have nothing to say. Nothing. I'm, okay. I'm vexed. Okay, so let me bring it Kulila because I don't have vexed. anything to say. <laughs> He's an entrepreneur, idea generator, TEDx speaker, and a patriot. He has a keen eye for opportunities based on his expertise in politics, working with non-governmental organizations and the federal government. He is passionate about Nigeria and is what we'll call um, a detribalized Nigerian. He considers his boundaries to be limitless and is really focused on changing the Nigerian narrative in political participation and currently serves as the executive director of the Electoral College Nigeria and is also the country lead for WeChat or WhatChat rather. Um, Nigeria. Kuni Lawa was uh, a once acting National Publicity Secretary of Kowa Party, Alliance for New Nigeria Secretarial Candidate in 2019, and has since transitioned to non partisan, influential player in politics and electoral matters in Nigeria. And we're always honored to have him with us. He's a friend of the house. Thank you so much, KL, for joining us this evening. It's always a pleasure, Juan. <laughs> it's great to be here. And, you know, the topic is going to be very quiet. I'm telling you, see that? I say I don't have <laughs> anything to say. Kule, 70 billion naira. No, you know, uh, when you're looking at this, you have to start from the top. 10 billion is being given to Abuja for it, uh, the issues Abuja has. Abuja has some issues with drainage. Um, Treadmore Estate was quite a problem. Street lights are not working. So that's a, that's a major problem. Wait, isn't that Wait. problem across all states? No, it is, but Abuja is always giving preferential. It's the federal capital. So, okay. And then, you know, to resuscitate um, farmlands, I think 19 billion, billion, billion is being yeah. given. Uh, please note the ratio. These farmlands are across Nigeria, Bielsa, Kogi, um, Lagos. Majorly place, affected major flood, by flash points. Yes. Yeah, and then you're only giving about 19.5 billion. Now, it gets interesting. The reasons why money was given to these other subventions was listed. Now, this is the confusing part. $35 billion given to the Judicial Council for what? To build new buildings. Judicial Council are the ones sitting on the presidential electoral cases. I didn't say that. You I will help you to say it. Like, I will help you to say it. Like, literally, when I saw this, I said, you guys just really like to give me a headache in this country. But, but this, is, this now gets impressive. <laughs> So to, to, for, for 303 members of National Assembly to settle down, 70 billion is being approved. To settle down. What work did they do? Please, can I say the figure? Please, I need to, I need to be clear here. I need to say this okay. figure so that people will know. So each person, 231 million and 23,000 is annoying. So this gets complex. Remember that these new members, and you know, Nigerians always want to agitate. Oh, it can't be Labour Party, it can't be PDP, it can't be NMPP. All of them are present. They are the new members. Especially, the new members are even made more of, <laughs> of, the, of the new parties than they are of the older ones. 
So, and they, of course, they, agreed to, they are going to agree to this. So, the executive wants to take um, 500 billion, which it wants to give, though it's cancelled is 8K. I think it has, the news, it has become news now, it's cancelled is 8K. I think the uproar against giving 8,000 to families was quite an issue. So, I think the government has cancelled that based on people really complaining, as in it didn't make sense as a palliative measure to give people 8,000 naira to do what? And um, that has been thrown under the bus. But they have 500 billion. So the executive, the best way to look at it is maybe a, a let's share the cake ratio. So the executive wants to hold 500 billion. To do that, you must pet the National Assembly with 70 billion. And you must ensure that you can't go to court to fight this matter, hence giving the Judicial Commission 35 billion. The three arms of government are happy. The citizens lose. Mm. I'm sorry, but so <laughs> so we come back to we are we don't like oppression unless we're the ones oppressing people because that's what it means. I mean, considering what you just said, that all the parties, all the new parties that were all saying, "Oh, give everybody a chance. Let's let's explore something new." I mean, they're all good. Nobody's going to say no to this money. Well, if, if you, you look at it, the people that they are set, the people that this money is taking up to settle, which are the new members, are more of ABGA. Uh, there are about eight parties in the National Assembly. So that's ABGA, SDP, ADC, um, Labour, Labour Party, Party um, NMPP. Uh, those are the new boys in town. So they are mostly, they are new came in with APC and PDP, but not that much. The new parameters are actually the new party. What exactly are all this money meant to do? Well, um, let's, let's start from the beginning. Um, sometime in, I think, 2009. No, preceding. Let's start from the beginning. So initially, National Assembly used to be an open door. I remember I was serving, uh, being in Abuja in 2002, 2003. You could walk into the Senate President's office I remember Chuba Okadibu at the yeah. time. I remember his office used to smell of cigarette smoke so much. I, I, that's to tell you it was an open door. You can't go to the National Assembly right now. It's not that easy. And they built sometime in 2010. That was when they added their monument. So the basic salary, like what we're arguing, and you know everybody's talking about the ramfac increase of salaries. Mm -hmm. The truth is that a senator or House of Reps salary is about 400 and something thousand, close to 500, in the area of 500. So let's just peg at 500,000. If they did, and they've not reviewed it since 2010. It's okay for them to review it. Their problem has never been their salary. Mm -hmm. During COVID, I remember a lot of National Assembly members came out and said they were not taking their salaries, and Nigeria was happy. And Nigerians were happy, and I was laughing. I was like, oh, God, you guys don't even get it. It's not their salaries. Mm -hmm. By the time you put in the emoluments, and the, you're talking of newspaper allowance that's $2 million. We're talking of wardrobe allowances that is on the border of $7 million. By the time you finish, your take-home package is close to $36 million. What is the salary of 500K going to alter? So we allowed this in 2010. I don't know whether, of course, I think it's because of Nigeria's basic political literacy. And since then, the National Assembly in cahoot with the executive has always carved its own, its own this thing. If you look at the national budget, the National Assembly takes about 100 and something billion as its own personal uh, Funds. Yes, they will say they need to pay uh, staff working for them, or that's the excuse they use, and a few other things. But if you look at the staff working in National Assembly, how many are they really? And then you put, you juxtapose that across the amount spent on 469 Nigerians, that is um, 360 from the House of Rep and 109 from the Senate, which is the High House. And you look at these ungodly amounts being put together based on their, their salaries put together. It's, it's, it's highly shocking. And you know what? They've developed this thing to quite a, a system that only the National Assembly can affect the emoluments or the allowances of the National Assembly. So how can you... So it's just like now, Uwa decides to employ me to work with Waze, and then she gives me the liberty to choose my own salary. Come on, it's going to be a party now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around a country that has complained so bitterly that we are in debt. Um, we've seen how a lot of things, you know, that would have brought some level of relief or succor for mm. the average Nigerian being taken, being yanked off. I mean, the electricity people are still knocking around the corner, right? 
every single thing that has to do with you know giving us some level of breather you know to be able to live you know and just breathe it's been yanked off right and now you put an allocation you know what really baffles me is the lopsidedness of the thinking farmers were complaining about i mean very soon they will talk about what's it called food, food shortage. shortage yeah I, will, I mean if you check around the sdg goals a lot of things is is, is circled around that uh, yeah. food security yeah. you know because it is lurking this food insecurity is lurking around the corner and now there are farmers that are genuinely in problem right now because what some of their farmlands you know were swept away by flood and you allocate something to them that I don't even see how far that can go, right? It's the same structure when it comes to healthcare, the same structure when it comes to education. You see that repeatedly, right? Those allocations continue to, um, what's it called? Dwindle, down. Dwindle yeah. downwards. While the allocation that has to do with, you know, enriching someone or giving people extra perks and whatever keeps going up. So why do we have this problem? And why are we Nigerians, you know, sitting down and watching this happen. What can we do about it? First, first and foremost, Nigerians are not concerned with how governance runs. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd explain something. On the same ballot paper, in this, I'm just giving an example with 2019. The statistics, the statistics are far worse in 2023. But in 2019, on the same day, voting for president, you have, let's say, 20, 27 million people participating just to send it, which is in the same polling unit, the same day, the same everything. There's a drop to, if you take everybody participating in Nigeria, there's a drop to almost 16 million. By the time you get to House of Assembly, averagely just about 9, 10 million Nigerians vote, meaning we don't care. If you notice the conversations around politics, all you hear is uh, Peter Obi, Atiku. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody even cares. And then I've been in situations where I've had, and in Etiosa here, I've had to, you know, discuss with people and, you know, people thought it was a sin to vote a different party, maybe at presidential, then vote another party for, for Senate, then mm -hmm. another. They thought your ballot would be cancelled. Who, whoever. Because they didn't know that. That's bad. So we've not really cared about the other levels of governance. We do not demand anything from them. In short, we absorb them in in, from governance. Let's be honest. I, I, I've been in churches, I've been in mosques, I've been in different places where they're discussing governance and House of Rep and Senate senators are sitting down there and they're totally absorbed from the problem. And some of them even come and give testimonies and explain that Nigeria <laughs> is bad. We had it. This is a country where we had a senator who was teaching us so much common sense and proposed only three bills and feel that even uh, he sponsored three bills and couldn't consolidate one bill to become law, Ben Murray Bruce. Mm. But yet he was making common sense. Common sense to who? We don't pay you to make common sense to us. Go to the house and go make common sense to them. But we, we exalted him. We rated him better than uh, Dino, who we thought was a catastrophe. But I'll be honest, in the 8th Assembly, Dino was the most successful senator. Ten bills passed, higher than anybody in the Senate. Until today, probably still the highest, uh, the senator has passed the highest bills. It's shocking based on Dino. His, his, his <laughs> but, personality. But it tells you a lot. And... We don't care about that. If you put, juxtapose 20 Nigerians, uh, 30 Nigerians, put them in a the room and give them an exam and say, Senator Ben Murray Bruce and Senator Dino Melayo was the best senator, many people are going to take Senator Ben Murray Bruce. Sure. But that's we, like, we like the packaging. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's what gets us. We're Africans. So <laughs> we cannot, and then we don't even care about budgeting. A lot of people, you know, budget does a lot of work around here. Budget says, you know, this amount going to National Assembly is absurd, it's preposterous. Most of us don't care. We don't even look at the Nigerian budget. The, the National Assembly has been pickpocketing from the coffers of Nigeria since inception. Why do you think they are rubber stamp? You think if they were, if they were as hungry as the British Parliament, the president would be able to go sit down? <laughs> they won't. So it's, it's highly shocking. And you know, we want a system where there's separation of powers. And all the executive has done is kidnap the other two, two uh, arms of government. And they know how to do it. 
So, which raised the question. So, everybody's talking about the 70 billion going to National Assembly. Nobody is looking at the 35, 35 billion, billion that is going to the Judicial Commission with no tag. All right, thanks for staying with us. As you already know, we're discussing the 70 billion budgetary allocation for lawmakers. And we're adding the 35 billion to the judiciary. Mm. We're going to add that now. <laughs> yes, we have to discuss that. And we have with us Kunle Lawa. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038466. You can also tweet at us at Wish Show Africa One with the hashtag Wish Show. Kunle, you raised something very, very strong. But let me come to Jola, of course. If we continue like this, Namia, you go to talk for me. <laughs> <laughs> let me come to you, Jola. Mm. Go ahead. Okay, so I, I personally, I, I want to understand at this point now, I know that you are, you are a very big advocate on, you know, Nigerians getting, you know, um, literacy, you know, when it comes to politics. Politics, politics and all that. Is there anything that can be done? Or we're just to assume that, well, that 70 or 35B is just gone like that. There's nothing we can do as office of the citizens because i mean on the other hand these guys are there to i mean they're our representatives they are there at our behest you understand it's not like oh they just went there i mean i can say that oh this person representing my constituency i, I don't understand this money you want to collect come and explain do, do, you do we have any any room to even Put our, 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 how would I say, to influence this? Let, let me put it like that. Or we, we, we should just sit back and just... Let me, let me first start with this. They don't represent you. Because I, I don't know what they've done that represents you. Well, I, first, um, what you think um, is supposed to come to you, which is constituency projects, it's non-constitutional. There's no basis in the Nigerian constitution for it. So it's a fraud already by the National Assembly. First thing. Wow. In which country do you see legislators having executive yeah. functions? Now, the, shock, the most shocking part is that they don't even live near you. This is the only country where people that serve in legislative positions yeah. live in the capital. Yeah. Yeah. In other countries, US, Sweden, they go to the capital, meet, and they, they give them train tickets, and they're out of it back to their constituencies. But here, they live in Nigeria. It's even shocking. Abuja, now, the federal government provides houses for them. So how do they represent their people? Constituency um, um, or constituency houses, um, houses and constituencies which they're supposed to meet with their people. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody's there. It's grass. Uh, grass is meeting with people. So I don't see how they represent you. Now, going down to you holding them accountable. For you to hold them accountable, you first need to know what their offices need to do. Now, this is where Nigerians have a problem. Now, Right now, if you ask in Nigeria, uh, who is a, what's the name of that actor, that has side chick, whatever his name is. Um, so, if they ask him what's the side chick's name, sorry, I don't know such things. Mm -hmm. That's why I know things about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, if you ask that question anywhere, the average Nigerian will give you G's to yeah. tell you her name. They can't even tell you what street she's living on. Okay. But when it comes to things that affect themselves, expect Nigerians directly, they don't have a clue. And it's so bad. That um, if, you, if you discuss with maybe someone sitting down in the National Assembly, and you say, I pick my constituents' calls. The job is not to pick their calls. The job is to represent them. Two different things. Picking their calls. Why? You listen to them. You pay school fees. This is not to say that the electorate, too, does not have its own issues. Mm -hmm. I look at us as we tolerate the corruption. Or like now, uh, me and Kune and Ua will tolerate the corruption so that the day we are becomes house of rep, Kunle to be running issue now, oh, Alpha now, that constituency project, throw some things come my side. <laughs> so Nigeria is like, you know, you're, you're attending a buffet and then the, the constituency project is samosa. Everybody's waiting for their turn for it to come back. And that's how we've always looked at it. And for me, that's, that's the biggest problem. You would, on social media, and I, this happens a lot, on social media you see people saying, okay, you know what, the other, I don't like this person. This guy is not representing. He's not, he's not doing his work. All of you write all your intelligent jargon on diet. Now, here's the catch. The next day, the person maybe goes for an OAMBE and then sees the same senator, then takes a, a picture. 
The same people on your social media who start writing on that, ah, you've made it, Diola, you've made it, you're blow. moving up. <laughs> and I, I don't <laughs> get it. So, yeah, sure. so the truth is, we are not ready for good governance because we don't even understand the parameters of good governance. Okay, so I want us to revisit the $35 billion that is allocated to the um, judiciary, right? I mean, what Diola asks is quite pertinent, right? Right now, at least, she they don't even tell us what in 19 billion they go for. They've told us what 70 billion is supposed mm -hmm. to help new, new people member. settle in. Even though we don't agree with it, at <laughs> least, but it has at a least tag. They, at least it has a tag. 35 billion to the judiciary has no tag. And we know currently that there's a huge case for the 2023 elections, you know, that the judiciary are supposed to be the ones that are unbiased, that are supposed to be the ones handling that case. So you've just handed over to them 35 billion naira. What do you expect those kind of judgments to do? Well, uh, uh, those kind of well, judges wait, to do? Let me first tell you something. What? I'm rewatching Game of Thrones. I want to complete it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this angle you are going to, you don't want me to comment on it. But generally, the truth is that the executive probably made an anomaly there. It it leaves a lot. No, to I, I I I cannot. I don't want to. I beg to disagree that it's a, that it is it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's blind it's blind. They, they don't even try to make May, it look like. Maybe they just forgot. To no, add no, 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 no. Don't, don't make it look no, like that. Remember, because who I already did the, I already did the big job. I already told you that all the rest were tagged, and I told you that I was not tagged. Yes, no. So I've done the big job. I don't, I don't think I need to dissect. <laughs> you have to dissect for that, Kune. You have to dissect for that. Because you see, all this thing where they talk, it's like for me, I, sometimes my heart breaks, honestly, because I don't see any change happening in this country anytime soon. Because as long as somebody understands the language that Nigerians continue or, or, or they want to continue to hear, and just continues to play that language. Nobody will say, you know what, I've had it. It is time for this country to actually take a turn. Because this is what is happening. Because you cannot tell me, as far as I am concerned, it looks like bribery to me. What exactly is the judiciary doing with 35 billion naira? What have they said that they needed? Remember, you understand? You know, if you were given to the entire judiciary, it sends a different message. It is oh. the judges. It, it is the judicial council. Council, the judges. I didn't say anything. <laughs> You're yeah, even making the matters worse. What? What? The what? The what? <laughs> You're making the matter worse, Kuni. Like, I'm really scared. <laughs> it was written there. It was the, the judicial the council. The audacity of it is just... Kuli. And again, you know, like you rightly said, they are getting away with it because we don't bother. So how do we end this? Because literally, right, Kuni, I'm tired of palliatives. I'm tired of all these things that they come up with. You but the palliatives have even been cancelled now. Is that there are no, no, but the 500 million billion mm. dollars is still hanging well, somewhere. Billion, they naira, naira. billion naira. naira, sorry. It's still hanging somewhere. Dollars don't enter my mouth too much. Mm. You know, that 500 billion naira is still hanging somewhere. They will still give it a name. Mm. So what exactly can we do to stop all of these things? If we want to suffer, let us suffer. And know that, yes, not that we... We are trying to say, okay, you know what, let us adjust to our reality. And somebody is using back, uh, the, the backyard to come I'll, and do I'll something give, against I'll criminal. Give an, I'll give an example. So two days ago, when, uh, three days ago when this came out, the first thing that came out was they were giving 8,000 to... Yeah. The uproar against that 8,000, it won't just... It cost a change. So if Nigerians decide to take governance important, of course these things will be dealt with. Mm. You cannot deal with things and expect um, no reaction. It's what we've decided to take as nothing. That's what has been allowed to pass under the table. So for me, I'm surprised nobody in Nigeria and everybody is just discussing the 70 billion. National <laughs> Assembly. I leave the National Assembly alone. Judicial Council, at this point in governance in Nigeria, what are you when doing? When is a court case? Yeah. What are you doing? 35 and you're even supposed to be the the, the custodian yeah, of, custodia of the law of justice. And it, it's, ah, well, today know. is International Criminal Justice, justice Day. Day. Only. What can we do to tie this 35 billion naira to the International Criminal Court? Because I don't understand. Let them tell us what exactly they, that money is for. Yeah. I'll explain. Um, now, if you really wanted to take the case to the International Criminal Court, you need to first understand something. You elected these guys. Yeah. 
The Judicial Council? No, you elected oh, the National okay. Assembly and the Executive. So they're going to Is it me that elected them? When I mean we, I don't mean you. I mean Nigerians. Is it Nigerians that elected them? Yes, we did now. Are you sure? Why do but we have a case in court? Didn't, no, didn't no, no. Elect Wait, now, why do we have a who, case in are, court? Well, you know, there's something critical about court cases still proved in court. I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Status quo. <laughs> status quo yeah. remains. Yeah. So even if you are going to say you are going to dispute that of the president, for example, you cannot dispute that of 469 National Assembly members. Kole, what's the way forward? Because what you is remember that the executive about? cannot approve this money without the National Assembly. No. Definitely. They did not, so the, it's okay for the it's executive the to dream. Uh, didn't Donald Trump want to build a wall? Now, si Pelosi ensured that that money did not come. Was he not talking about wall? Is he talking about wall in this government? But as long as the National it's Assembly not approved, is not approved, yeah. the president can't do anything. So the real culprits in this game, don't even look at the president. It's, it's the work of the executive to say, gimme, gimme, gimme. It's the work of National Assembly to say I'm more giving you. Solution. What can we do? One, Nigerians need to understand the way governance works. Two, we need to start paying attention to a lot of things. Three, there's, the problems are not APC, PDP, Labour Party. The problems are those in power and their inaccessibility to the pains and problems of those who they are governing. That's the major problem. We need to understand that. If we divorce ourselves from that, we're going to have a very major problem. Because our simple understanding of most things is because you are not APC, that's why you don't like it. Because you are not PDP, that's why you don't like it. Because you are not Labour Party, that's why you don't agree with it. So we need to first get out of all that quagmire. Then we need to have people that have pay attention to understanding. Before I got on the studio, I was on a, I was on a, I was Twitter, on a space. Twitter space with a former local government chairman, and you know they were explaining that by the time you pay salaries in the local government, he was he had forgotten that he had mentioned the number of staff he improved the local government up to 55 nurses, a uh, hundred doctors. This is a more other thing, hundred doctors mentioned, and by give or take, he couldn't have account for 1,000 staff. So he was explaining that the FAC allocation, which is close to about 400, 405 million actually for Amor Dauphin for federal, but by the time you divide it into the LCDs that are created, it's 200, 200 million. So 200 million. Paying people, and you don't pay anybody more than 100K times 1,000. How much is that? But you are justifying that by paying those salaries, 200 million is gone. So that therein lies our problem. And, you know, when he places that, his party members will tell you, ah, he's correct, he's doing it right, this, this, that, that. Nobody wants to look at it. And this is the thing. If you own the company and you had... So are we uh, allowed to ask them to open the books to us and would they give us those books to there's see? There's the FOI bill, which yeah. is effective in Nigeria. And let's remember that Nigeria's constitution supersedes state constitution because if I remember, the Lagos State Assembly has not passed that act. Mm. But uh, as long as Lagos remains a part of Nigeria, it must respond. And if it doesn't respond and it's your local government, local government chairmen do not have immunity, so you can take them to court. And if they, 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 they cannot prove it in court, they will go to jail. EFCC is ready to catch a lot of them. Sorry, I, I'm not <laughs> raising that agitation against local government chairman. Kunle, that flooding that I saw at Agigi is something that is persistent, constantly happening. Right, and this is just one problem out of the plethora of problems that we have in Nigeria. But you need to understand that drainages are vested in the power of the local government. I know. I'm going somewhere with the conversation, okay. right? If truly that the government is seek, seeking eight hundred and whatever billion naira, eight hundred million dollars, eight hundred million dollars, five hundred billion. Do you understand? No, 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 no. You know the total amount, you know, 500 billion is set aside Side for, for there are other, yeah, so everything in total is about 800 and something billion. billion. Do you understand? If they are seeking that kind of funds, what would be a genuine, um, what's it called, disbursement of that fund that would make sense to Nigerians to say, okay, you know what, these people are truly working towards us, you know, getting better as a nation. Okay, so if your issues are first for well, Okay, what problems do you, what, what do Nigerians use for? for? Uh, road usage yeah. and then at home. Funny, um, I, was give, I, I was talking with somebody the day before yesterday and I was giving average statistics of the amount of light a house uses, about 149 kilowatts yeah. per house. That cannot power a fridge. 
So um, if you have 500 million to spend, if you, I did, I, I was on the conversation and I, I think I put it out. And I said, it will make more sense to alleviate, to provide palliatives this way. And um, I said, carry the 500 million, uh, 500 billion there. Um, a 2.5 kVA system will probably cost you about 1 million. You put it across 500,000 homes in Nigeria. The amount of fuel people buy would, be, would drop drastically. And somebody came under the comment and said, but the homeless haven't eaten. And I said, there's no country in the world that gives money to the poorest of the poorest. What happens for a country to develop is that you put the middle class at a place where they are not under pressure. Once they are not under pressure, they will, they will employ more nannies, employ more drivers, employ more this. That's how the poorest gets the gain from it. So the more you balance the middle class, the better it is for the poorest. Giving money to the poorest has never worked anywhere in the world. And that is the conversation. If they were thinking that those are palliatives, using renewable energy, providing this, these systems have 10, 15 year guarantees. Yeah. You've, cleared, you've cleared that, meaning at home they have light. I will buy fuel from car to go to work and come back. I will be rushing to come back home because there's light at home. There's and you would have power. solved the major yeah. problem because now businesses you can. Wait, yes, you know, try. there's a lot that yeah. can. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So for me, I think a genuine approach to some of these budgets or whatever it is that you hear would be that, okay, the government is truly solving, like you rightly said, identify the problems and then just, you know what, try to find a way to fix the problem. I was happy when they said that they were taking up all the bureaucracy around the power sector and they were opening it up for more investors to come in, meaning that, you know, somebody can decide to say, I'm going to power the entire uh, Victoria yes. Island mm -hmm. and all of those things, but, right? But remember, in all this, as much as we look at the federal government, the most culpable for me are state governments. Now you've been giving powers for mini grids. A state like Adamawa can power the entire Nigeria from renewable energy. Same with Sokoto. Same with multiple states. What happened to the Lagos solar power project, which is totally non-existent right now? What, 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 what's going on? And state governors point to the federal. So if Adamawa can power the whole of Nigeria, first of all, is Adamawa currently fully you know, 24-hour oh, power? Yeah. And are they able to, to, to prove so, that they can do that? And how do we then integrate it? it? Yeah. Have you, okay, so if you go to northern Nigeria, the amount of land that is left bare mm. is massive. Yeah. Now, what shocks me is states like Adama, Zamfara, and Co. haven't thought that they could sell renewable energy to other states. This is the new IGR. It's bigger than having crude oil. Yeah. It's bigger than having, but because we have state governors that, you know, just interested in... Just wait, wait for cap oh, in hand. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, ladies. I said it before that Nigerian, um, Nigeria governance is a scam. We need the traditional gods <laughs> <laughs> to swear them into power. If anyone violates the terms and conditions of governance and promises to citizens, the gods will deal with them sharp, sharp. Ah, Ade, calm down. Ade is in the UK. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ade. Is there, <laughs> do you have a comment? Yeah, so this is, um, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. 70 billion budgetary allocation for lawmakers. I have no problem in allocating a budget for lawmakers and I'm not against it. But don't you think it is on the high side? Our main problem in Nigeria is misplaced priority. According to Sister Ua, you find out that when funds are allocated, the rich get richer, and there are problems that need funds to be fixed, and we do not do that. It is very sad and unfortunate, for crying out loud, what is the judiciary doing with 35 billion budgetary allocation? I really don't understand this. Don't you think this is ridiculous? You ladies are looking good and beautiful tonight. Thank My name is you. Daniel Ela, Ways regular fan. Thank, Thank you, Daniel. Daniel. So I <laughs> weep for Nigeria. Her future looks bleak. Mm. Please, what is the way forward? This is from Mrs. Adeniji from Aja. Mm. Way forward. In one minute. I like what you said. Yeah. Focus on building the middle class. Yeah. Right? If you take a lot of us and, and give us tools to be able to continue to, uh, what's it called, um, generate income. We can take a lot more people out of poverty and employ them. I love that. I just hope they are listening. Um, so the One minute. Okay, so the problem with Nigeria is that I don't think Nigeria has ever elected Nigerians to, run, to mm. be in office. And by Nigerian, I mean they are Nigerians, yes, by birth and stuff, but they're not Nigerians at heart. heart yes. So what happens is that you've elected an ethic, the like house and Yubo, whatever, yeah. and they, they're trying, there's this competition within the system. But there's one key thing. Politicians always come together. 
So regardless of party, they are swallowing that 70 billion together. Mm -hmm. And that is what Nigerians need to understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On that note, thank you, Diola. Thank you so much again, KL. Before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. And more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Out of sheer insensitivity coupled with impunity, the members of the National Assembly, regardless of political affiliation, conspired <laughs> to breach a relevant provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 by padding the Supplementary Appropriation Bill 2023 to provide a so-called palliative of $70 billion for 306 newly elected members of um, the National Assembly. And this was from the senior human rights activist and senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana. Exactly what Kunle said. At that point, they are no longer APC, PDP, Labour Party, Abga. They are all politicians. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.